I lived in Germany for two years in the late 60s and while there developed an interest in German wines and came back to the Boston area where I'm from in 1969 and that summer took a course in wine appreciation. The man who taught the course became a good friend of mine and through that friendship I began to develop an interest in the wine business. In June of 1970, I spent two and a half weeks in Burgundy and Bordeaux on vacation and came up with this scatterbrained idea that what I really wanted to do for the rest of my life was somehow move back to France and get into the wine business. Well, fortunately for me and for France, an article appeared in the Wall Street Journal just after coming back from that trip, talking about what a great future California had for becoming a world-class wine growing area. And as, as a result of that article, I forgot about France and turned my eyes towards California. And so he decided to sell everything and pack the kids up in the car and we drove across America in a mint green station wagon and my father came to this sleepy little valley called the Dry Creek Valley, bought a rundown 55 acre prune orchard and started the first winery here after Prohibition. After I bought this property, I had the local farm advisor and a viticultural consultant friend of mine come out and we dug some test holes in the soil and they said, yep, looks like good vineyard dirt. And I said, what would you plant? And they recommended Gewürztraminer or Napa Gamay. And I asked, what about Sauvignon Blanc? And they said, no, Sauvignon Blanc is a bad variety for, for this part of California. Well, I went ahead and planted Sauvignon Blanc. And as it turned out, it, it appears that Sauvignon Blanc appears to be the best white variety grown in Dry Creek Valley today. So when Dad arrived here, he was really considered an outsider, and yet he was a true renegade. He was the first to start actually buying grapes from the local growers and making wine from them and paying them what they were worth. In the early 80s, we had a Zinfandel, and we wanted to put something on the label, so we basically put Dry Creek Valley on the label. The labels were rejected by the BATF. We were given a use up on these labels because it was not a recognized appellation. And they said you can use these labels up for it since you've already had them printed, but next year you need to say Sonoma County. And that's when we started the move to get Dry Creek recognized as a appellation in California. Dad sat down with a couple of local growers and on our kitchen table drew the boundaries for what would later become the Dry Creek Valley AVA. I love the Bordeaux blends, but in California you had to call it red table wine. So in the mid-1980s, Dad got together with a couple of other vintners to come up with a classification for wines blended in the Bordeaux tradition. And they chose the term meritage, which combines the word merit and heritage. And we were the first winery to start using that term back in 1985. All along the way, I was told my ideas had never been done before, but being a kid from Boston, I was just bullheaded enough to go ahead and do it. I am so proud that Dad is considered an American wine legend, but he's also my dad and my legend, and I could not be more proud to be carrying on the tradition of our family winery. Being called an American wine legend is kind of new to me because I was just doing my job promoting Sonoma County and Dry Creek Valley. <laughs>